three years ago, I wanted to do something new. And I wanted to do something that enables people, that makes them better, what they really like to do, and protects them while doing so. We all have deficiencies, maybe me more than you, who knows? But I had this vision of something I wanted to achieve that maybe even went beyond my lifetime. And my first step was making this thing. It's a tiny, uh, audible, contextual computer. So you might not know what that is, but I'll tell you why I make these things. This is not the future, and you should be happy about it. Because it's not a tech future, it's a human future. It's a future where we are in the center, not computers. So I want to take you through 100 years of interaction. 50 years back, 50 years in the future. What do I think that is going to happen and why am I making this? About 50 years ago, you had stamp cards. This is the way you interact with a computer. You make holes in a piece of paper, you put that into a reader, and the computer understood what you wanted to do. It evolved, luckily, because it would be kind of tedious doing Pokemon with punch cards. <laughs> so we added more sensors, we added a keyboard, that made it easier for us to interact, the interface changed, and we had a new type of interaction model, input, output, visual one, keyboard. High abstraction layer, me punching something, something happens there. Now we evolved, luckily, we evolved fast, so we started having more sensors, we started having trackpads, we started having mice, and the interface changed as well. It changed, in fact, so much that we invented a new type of computer, a computer that was on us rather than in front of us. It also changed the interaction models. It changed new ways of understanding what a device does. And someone had spent billions on making a new smartphone, and the most popular app was the iBeer. <laughs> Remember that? It was an app, and you, when you drank the beer, there was a beer depicted on the smartphone, and the accelerometer depicted how you could actually drink that. So they spent billions of dollars, and the most popular app was a simulation of how to drink a beer. The input-output model changed again. We were all of a sudden touching things. We're touching something that seemed haptic, but still in a 2D universe. But this is so old school. This is so old. Because people have been working on changing that for a long time, and, but it's just, just really the start. So these computers need to understand what you do and how you do it. So you need to add a lot of sensors to you. If you've tried to use Siri or other things, just saying something is not enough. The device actually needs to know where you are, what you're doing, how you're reacting upon it. So you need to have incredibly intimate sensorics on your body. The computers need to understand how you move, what your intention is, what your motivation is. Adding those senses creates a very refined model of understanding what you do and what your intention is. But this is not really viable. We're not going to walk around like this. But this is going to change because sensors become much smaller. In just the last 10 years, sensors have shrunk by a factor of 25. And we'll continue. We see incredible miniaturization, not just what happened today, but even a few years ago. This is by the Fraunhofer Institute making a blood pressure sensor that is embedded into the blood veins. And this is tiny. So it's not just about one sensor. It's not about two sensors. You have millions of sensors in your body. And you'll have millions of sensors on your body in the future. All of those will understand what you do and will be much more discreet in interacting with you. They will understand where are you, in what kind of surrounding are you. They will understand what you're doing and how you are actually doing physically while performing that action. We call this contextual computing. The computer chooses to do act differently depending on the context. Our computer's in the ear. If you get a phone call, you nod, it will pick up the call. That's contextual computing. While I do something, something happens. And imagine what happens if you don't have just five or ten, but millions of sensors. The interaction models will change. You will not have something in your pocket anymore. You'll actually interact with something that is much more discreet. This is made by a Belgian research team, not this year, but about four years ago. He actually has a contact lens in his eye with a display. So when you remember the IBM computer from in the 80s, just 30 years later, you have absolutely incredible graphics on your screens. Not, not less than 30 years away, we'll have the, the same kind of amazing graphics in your eyes. You will not be able to distinguish between reality 
and this artificial life based upon a sensor or based upon a, a rendering device in your eyes. So we will have, have computer systems that will understand how you move, how you feel, what you want to do and how you want to do it and simulate completely an interaction with someone else. Anything from drinking beer, feeling dizzy, or to a point of arousing you or creating new ways of interacting with people. And it's not about having the technology in the center. While you do it, you look like this. You'll all be gone. Computers will be tiny. You won't be able to see you have one on, but you'll be enabled by it. In fact, you'll be able so, so much by it that the knowledge, the communication, the entertainment that is at your hands is going to enable you to take jobs you couldn't take before. It might enable a guy that works off the street in Australia to take a lab job in Europe while he is in Australia. He doesn't need to be there. This entire system is not made for us to be engulfed in technology. It is made for us to release ourselves of technology and enable ourselves in the situation we're in. But it might have a lot of other consequences. The systems will be linking us, on, us with knowledge that we couldn't access before. Currency changes from being money to knowledge and enablement. The company that owns knowledge and owns the enablement has a currency. It's not longer a dollar, it's something else. But on the other hand, if it's in the hand of someone wrong, they have access to anything that you think, want to do, or want to achieve. Would you like someone to know whom you're having sex with, when you're actually having sex with them, especially if it's a company? This is going to change complete industries. If you're looking at the intimate knowledge of how I feel in certain situations, how I react to certain situations, or how I react to food, or how I react to situations, or how I react to, to environment change. It also means that I am very specific. I can be helped with very focused medicine. It will be personalized medicine. And all of that data that enables medicine to become personalized will come from disappearable computers. Now, if you can simulate the environment you're in, why do you need to go to work? With these immersive, hyper-realistic environments, you will not need to go into a, an office anymore. So the entire retail space would be completely thrown over. You won't need offices anymore, and you won't need to go to them. Imagine the impact on the real estate market. So people talking about self-driving cars being in the future. It's not, because they will be obsolete. You won't need to go with them. Where do you need to go if you can, re if you can experience everything artificially? even down to emotional impact. Is this going to happen in the next 50 years? I don't know. But if you look at the last 50 years and the acceleration, if you just project what we're doing right now, we will have it. Thank you very much.